Like my friend Eminem says, because we need a little controversy, let's start with my mobile browser of choice. Bromite is a Chromium fork with support for ad blocking and enhanced privacy. Chromium is an open sourced browser project. The infamous Google Chrome is based off of Chromium, along with some other popular browsers like Brave, Microsoft Edge, and Opera. Well, maybe those last two aren't the most popular, especially with this audience. Similar to stock Android OS, Chromium, which Bromite is built off of, comes bundled by default with Google installed inside of it. Bromite, on the other hand, is degoogled. I can already imagine someone typing in the comment box, just use Firefox, Chromium is Google. But the hard truth is that when it comes to security, Chromium is far superior to Firefox. I'll be doing a video in the future covering that statement specifically, but for now I'm going to avoid that rabbit hole in this video. So if you do want to give Bromite a try, I would suggest changing two settings after you install it. The first is changing the default search engine that's set to Google, so I would suggest heading over into settings and switching that to something else. The second setting is related to the built-in block list that comes with Bromite. It's decent, but it's not great. I found this one on GitHub and it works much better in terms of ad blocking and there's even a German specific one for any German viewers out there. So while you're in the settings, I would suggest switching to that list instead for a better ad free experience. This browser is quick, blocks ads, and has the added security of being based off of Chromium. Bromite is the only app I'm going to cover today not available by default in the F-Droid store. I will leave a link down below with instructions on how to install it on your device if you do want to give it a try. As you can imagine, I enjoy watching YouTube videos. I've tried watching videos in the phone mobile browser, but it's just not a great experience. Personally, I think Google does this on purpose to make you download their mobile app, but that is just my opinion. That's where Newpipe comes in. First of all, whoever came up with the name, great job. Newpipe is an open source streaming front end for YouTube. Basically, you open the app and you can watch videos. So there's no Google account sign in in the app, but you can still subscribe to channels that you want to follow. The reason I put subscribe in quotes is that you're not really subscribing in the traditional sense. The app is creating a local RSS feed of the creators you want to follow so you can track them. So besides blocking ads and having all the other features you get in the stock YouTube app, the other feature I really like is homepage customization. Like others of you, I regularly fall victim to the suggested YouTube videos. You go to YouTube looking for something, 15 minutes later you're watching some unrelated video on how highway numbers in the US work and you forgot why you were there in the first place. I keep the home screen clean so I'm only there to watch what I search for or one of the creators I've subscribed to. So all of these apps are free and open source, which means that individuals like yourself volunteer their time for free to work on them. Sometimes these apps do have issues. In the case with Newpipe, Google slash YouTube updates the backend format and it breaks Newpipe. If that happens, before you spam GitHub with issues, check if there's an existing issue reported and look at that for updates. And while we're on the topic of reporting issues, don't make comments like this. The developers work hard on these projects in their free time, so at least try and be a decent human being to these people. If you want to demand an ASAP fix, you could instead learn to code, contribute to the project, and propose your fix. Now this last app is a favorite of mine. Thank you to the random subscriber who told me about it, and if you, the individual currently watching this video now, have any suggestions on apps I should try or apps you like, feel free to leave a comment down below or send me an email. I do also have my PGP key available on my website if you prefer to use that. The app is called Tracker Control, and as the name implies, it controls trackers for apps. The way it does this is by creating a local VPN server on your device, which allows it to monitor all traffic. Let me just reiterate that. It creates a VPN server locally on your device so your traffic is not leaving and going somewhere else. The app uses the disconnect block list and they also created a custom block list from analyzing over 2 million apps according to their website. And if all that wasn't good enough, the interface is on point. You get a list of the apps on your device and it tells you how many companies those apps contacted in the last week. When you select an app from the list, you get details on the tracking libraries detected and it breaks them down into different groups such as analytics, essential, fingerprinting, and so on. You can select which groups to block or unblock and you can even allow trackers one by one. This app could use a whole video just on itself, so I won't be going into all the specifics of it now. But I will say at first, it can be a little frustrating because some apps might break and not open, especially if you decide to block the trackers categorized as essential. Majority of your apps should work, but if that happens and the app does not function, you can go into settings, allow specific trackers or whole sections, close the app and relaunch it to see if it works. They also give you a convenient option to pause tracker control for 10 minutes to see if that's what's causing your issues. Worst case scenario, if you get frustrated and are considering uninstalling tracker control, just disable it completely for that specific app that's not working and move on. It's better to have some protection than none at all. 